Hello and welcome everyone to the week ahead commodity reports where we of course will be reviewing the markets for the week ahead. So now as we head into the final week of April it is gearing up to be a heavily macro driven week for the markets with attention now shifting to the Federal Reserve meeting US tax hikes and inflation. President Joe Biden he's preparing to unveil details of the 1.8 trillion American families plan on Wednesday. That proposal will represent the second part of Joe Biden's Build Back Better agenda following on from the 2.3 trillion green energy and infrastructure spending plan released earlier on this month. Now combined with the estimated 4 trillion in new spending which is expected to break all records as the biggest and most ambitious government overhaul on the economy ever in US history, Biden's proposal will be partially funded by tax hikes on high income Americans as high as 44% which will be amongst the highest tax rates in the world. Higher US tax combined with Joe Biden's infrastructure spending plans have raised fears of stagnation combined with a decline in GDP. Elsewhere, industrial metals, they've continued to gain bullish momentum this month, driven by the coming surge in green energy and infrastructure spending this year. President Biden's ambitious 2.3 trillion green energy and infrastructure spending plan will involve pumping hundreds of billions of dollars into improving the nation's aging roads, bridges, schools, railways, waterways, airport, cellular network, as well as building a national network of 500,000 electrical vehicle charging stations by 2030. All of this ultimately points to one thing, which is the US going to need more commodities and lots of them, specifically the industrial metals, which includes copper, palladium, platinum, silver, lithium, nickel, rare earth metals for electrical vehicle batteries and 5G technology. Last week, palladium prices, they led the rally, hitting an all-time high. Palladium's explosive rally also pulled up copper prices, which closed the week trading at its highest level in almost a decade. Copper prices have now doubled from the lows seen a year ago, and Biden's multi-trillion dollar infrastructure spending bill is expected to spur the nation's biggest ever buying spree in commodities, which further Further suggest that we could be on the verge of a multi-year super cycle as demand continues to outstrip supply over the next few years. Whichever way you look at it, the case for commodities in a well-diversified portfolio has never been more obvious than it is right now. And elsewhere, going to next week, the other main feature will be the Federal Reserve's monetary policy meeting, which concludes on Wednesday. And that will be followed by a closely watched press conference with Fed Chair Jerome Powell. Last month, Jerome Powell confirmed the central bank's commitment to keep quantitative easing policy in place well into 2023, whilst playing down the risks of rising inflation by stating that any price acceleration will be temporary. However, with more stimulus now coming through Joe Biden's new multi-trillion dollar spending spree, that inflation debate is likely to intensify and become much harder for the Fed to ignore. Also on traders radar going into next week will be US Q1 GDP data and the Fed's preferred inflation measure PCE data. So with that let's move over to the charts and we'll talk you through exactly what we're looking at here as we go into a new week. First of all just moving over to the metals here we'll have a look at copper first. As mentioned last week during the reports we banked 1,750 points across our positions last week on gold, on copper, silver and energies as well. So for every one lot that you'll be trading that's $17,500 of profit for every 10 lots that you'll be trading, that's $175,000 of profit we've been banking with our members at the Gold and Silver Club in the last week. So now going back to the price action that we're seeing with copper at the moment, you can see into Friday's close here, we're now very close to breaking above 10-year highs for copper. We've continued to maintain that any dips really into this market, you want to be buying into those with all of the infrastructure spending which we've got coming in the USA. Alongside that, all of the green energy policies and initiatives moving forward, which will also be utilizing copper and hedge funds and money managers. Overall net long position is very strongly biased to the long side. And of course, we have a favorable time of year for copper as well. So we remain long copper 
we've continued to bank profits on the breakouts, banking on strength over the last week here. What we want to see going to next week is whether we can get further follow through and essentially break out towards 10 year highs here as we go into a new week. We're going to stick with our copper position on normally the last week of April does tend to be favorable anyway for copper prices. So we'll see if we can get some further follow through here as we go into next week to take out the swing highs from February, which will take us up to 10 year highs for copper prices. Now, silver, as you know, we've been discussing this a lot on the week ahead commodity reports. We've been perceiving any weakness over the last month into March and at the beginning of the month as well as really buy opportunities. We've been highlighting with you opportunities to continue to stack between 24 up towards 25 US dollars per ounce. And just last week, we of course saw the breakout all the way up to $26.60 per ounce. As we mentioned last week on both reports, we have been banking on strength here. Many technical traders and analysts out there using outdated technical strategies, particularly retail traders, have been now starting to FOMO in right at the top of the move. We, as always, like to be early getting into our trades. We've been building positions here, discussing that with you in detail at the end of March, beginning of April, that you wanted to take advantage of this end of quarter rebalancing our portfolios, which saw the US dollar break out to five month highs, provided a fantastic opportunity to build into positions nice and low on silver as most of the market were panic selling out of their positions at that point expecting silver to go much lower but instead this turned out to be a gift and we've had a really nice solid breakout here breaking all the way up towards six week highs here for silver however going into the final week of april we do have contract settlement on the metals. We've also got end of month rebalancing on portfolios. And normally going to the start of May, it's not always the strongest week for the metals. Typically, the dollar does well as you move in to the beginning of May. In fact, we highlighted it to you on Thursday on silver asset of the day that after European Central Bank announcements, we often do get pressure to the downside with the metals and at the end of the month. And we've seen that very clearly with silver dropping half a percent to the downside on Friday. This followed on from negative pressure that we had after the European Central Bank announcement. We are still keeping some exposure on the long side here with silver, but those positions have been protected and we have been banking on strength over the last week as well. Very similar with gold as well. We discussed this with you, that potential to get pressure to the downside at the end of the week following on from the European Central Bank announcement, that again, we have contract settlement as we go into next week, which can provide further pressure to the downside on the metals. We're also going to the end of month where you could see outflows, especially strengthening the dollar, which tends to favor metals to pull back and especially as we go into May as well. So this is just really giving you a bit of a heads up at the moment as you might get more favorable prices to buy into if we do get these corrected price action which would be typical at the end of month at the end of April and as we move into the beginning of May and obviously you want to continue to bank into strength and not FOMO in at the top because we are seeing many traders retail in particular start to FOMO in at these levels with gold they're really late to the move as mentioned before on gold asset of the day at the beginning of the month between 1680 to 1700 was an absolute gift we were talking you through this when the price was at that exact level at the beginning of the month that that was a fantastic buy opportunity gold has rallied over 1000 points then it's given us a lot of profit we took more profit again last week off the table but now going into next week we often do tend to get a bit of pressure or consolidation as we go into the final week of the month either way we'll benefit here we still have some exposure but it's protected if we do get a further breakout to the upside and gold is able to climb back towards 1800 and break above that level we'll maintain their exposure as is normally at the end of the month and as you go into contract settlement there would be pressure to the downside which would give you more favorable opportunities to buy back in lower and at least take some profit off the table if you've had a really solid month as we have as well over the course of april finally just going over to gdx which is the gold miners you can see they're starting to turn as well after we've had another consecutive week of upside it's been interesting here as the gold miners have continued to lead the move across the metals complex however we're starting to find a little bit of resistance here around the 36 level again it would be very common to see corrective price action on miners as we get towards the end of the month and as we go into may and this could also correlate with pressure to the downside with the metals here so i'll keep that 
on your radar as we go into a new week. And as always, you do want to make sure that you're not following these outdated technical analysis strategies, which end up getting you really delayed confirmation on your trades, where essentially you end up buying right at the top of the move. We know many traders out there external to the gold and silver club who bought in right at the top here of the move. And they're now in drawdown as we go into a new week because they're FOMO'd in. They've waited for their delayed confirmation and only now are they getting the confirmation to go long. It's been the same on silver as well. Lots of delayed confirmations here. You want to be early coming into these market conditions. You also want to be aware of what the hedge funds, money managers, banks, institutions are doing in the market on a week to week basis. Alongside that, utilize sentiments or understanding when the market is getting a bit frothy, when it's moving into extreme greed, like we've seen recently on many markets, particularly the energies and also the metals versus when the markets are in peak fear. And typically when the markets are very fearful, when traders are panic selling out of positions, that's the best time to be getting in to a lot of the trades, especially if you time that with the relevant cycles in the market, the daily, the weekly, quarterly cycles, and you also understand capital flows and utilize a seasonal playbook as well to time your entries on each of the commodities and know the specific big catalyst that can drive commodity prices significantly. This will help you massively to time your entries so that you can catch big moves in the market. Alongside that, you also want to have understanding of macroeconomics and combine that with the intermarket correlations and ratios in the market. And of course, what the banks and institutions are doing on a regular basis that will help you massively to get an edge. So with that, if you would like to join our community of successful traders, learn the research driven approach to the market and join our professional mentorship program, there is an opportunity for you to do so. As a member, you get access to our exclusive live trading room webinars. You also get access to real-time trade ideas, access to institutional research and market intelligence, access to our private members academy website, and also support and one-to-one -one mentoring. For more information, just go to www jointhelivetradingroom.com. The link is also below this report in the description. So just click on the link, make an application, and we will, of course, get in touch with you ASAP. And do make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. That way you're always kept updated with all of the latest commodity reports.